Hello everyone, welcome to the Innovation Lab. So this is going to be our weekly lab updates episode number three and the goal here is to provide some steady weekly engagement to show you guys the things that we're working on. All right guys, in the last video we showed you guys how to make precise DC current measurements uh, using the uh, shunt method as you can see here and this is a very simple method because all you're doing is to measure the voltage drop across the shunt and you can see that on your dmm and since you already know the resistance value of your shunt then all you have to do is to divide the voltage drop by the resistance value and that way you get to measure the current that is running through your system and being able to do this is very important because i know that a lot of us will not be able to afford a current clamp like this. And if you're using your DMM to measure current, you can only measure up to 10 amps when you connect your probes in series with your load. So that kind of limits the amount of current you can measure using the DMM method. So talking about the last video, I had an oversight and I chose that word carefully because I don't want you guys thinking that we made a mistake. And the oversight was that given that the voltage drop that we were expecting to measure across the shunt here, was expected to be low in the millivolts range, I should have used the millivolt setting of the DMM here, but instead I used the voltage setting, which kind of gave us a higher margin of error. So if you're looking to measure the precise current going through the system, you can't really afford to do that because you can potentially be two to three amps off. So that will not give you precise measurements. So in the interest of doing things the right way and making sure that we show you guys the right way to do it, I am happy with the results that I got in the end, so no doubt about that. But I'm repeating the test to make sure that I show you guys the proper way to do it. And big thanks to our audience members for calling this out. This was something I missed. I greatly appreciate it. So what I'm going to do here is to repeat the initial test that we did with 36 volts in the system. And that gave us about 30 amps going through the system. And after that, I'm going to increase the voltage to 48 volts. And my plan for increasing the voltage level is to have a loop current that is greater than 30 amps going through the system this time. Hopefully we can get close to 40 amps by using the 48 volt power supply. All right, so this is a retest of the 36 volt test setup that we showed in the last video. And we're still seeing the same amount of load, which is a 1.05 kilowatts of load going through the system. And as you guys can see on the digital power monitor, we're measuring the same exact 29.1 amps that we saw during the last test in the previous video. And on the digital current clamp, we're measuring 30.25 amps, which is a slightly little bit better. I realize that making sure that the current clamp is well closed helps increase the precision of the measured current. All right, now looking at what's going through the shunt, so we see a voltage drop of 7.4 millivolts. In the previous video, because I had it set to measure voltage, so this is what I was seeing. So I was seeing the uh, measurements bounds between 0.007 and 0.008. So what I did was to kind of split the difference and call it 0.0075, which is 7.5 millivolts. So now that we use the proper setting of millivolts, all right, as you guys can see here, we're measuring 7.4 millivolts. So this essentially means that I was only off by 0.1 millivolts. All right, so I just did the math and it looks like we're measuring 29.6 amps instead of the 30 amps that we measured, which if you ask me, I would say, yes, it's not exactly precise, but it's not too bad. All right, for the next test, we're gonna be applying an input voltage of 48 volts on the system. So what we're seeing here right now is a current measurement of exactly 40 amps going through our digital current clamp. And on the digital power monitor, we're seeing 38.5 amps going through that. All right, so by doing a quick math, what we are measuring here is a precise current measurement of 39.2 amps that is going through the shunt, and that is factoring the uh, shunt resistance of 0.25 milliohms and the measured voltage drop of 9.8 millivolts. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I know that there isn't much deviation in the measured uh, current value or precision, but still, um, it's good to do things the right way. And I want to thank uh, my audience for being able to have the keen eyes to uh, kind of flush out the oversight that I had on the last video. I really, really appreciate that. 
So it's good to do things the right way. So if you're going to use this method, I fully agree that you should use the millivolt setting on your DMM. And the reason for that is that the voltage drop you're going to be measuring across your shunt, especially if your shunt is a super low resistance shunt. So you need to be able to measure that voltage drop in millivolts. And again, using the right settings helps a lot. All right, guys, I really appreciate you guys. And if you haven't seen the last video, I packed a lot of good information in there. We went over Ohm's law, talked about definitions of voltage and current and resistance. So that would be a good video for you guys to go watch. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Innovation Lab. All right, my friends, I'll see you guys in the next one.